Welcome to problem 13 of the Computer Science 121 2013 Winter 2 practice final exam. So this is a DFA implementation problem, uh, but as we noted when we went through this uh, in the review initially in the intro to this sequence, most of this is actually not DFA implementation. Most of this looks like pretty straightforward questions about this DFA here. Um, so I'm I'm actually not going to um, do the DFA implementation problem later on. I'm not going to do it at all uh, because I actually already did a DFA implementation problem. If you look back at the lab circuit problem, in order to solve the last part of that, I wrote a new DFA and I implemented that DFA. So I'm just going to briefly go through the outlines of how that implementation would work and I'll leave the rest of that to you as it's no different from what I've already shown here. Uh, shown up above that is. So uh, what state will this DFA be in after processing the string 11011? Well this this DFA obviously takes ones and zeros as input. Uh, the states are just numbered I guess so that we can write down what the state is or maybe they mean something but we're not really gonna know. Uh, we've got the start state over here so we'll just trace this here. I'll use green to trace this. So we're going to start in the start state, as we usually would, and then we're going to take in the string 11011. So let's just take those step by step. So 1 takes us here, 1, and we go around the circle here, back to the same spot, 0 takes us here, 1 takes us here, and 1 leaves us here. So we'll be in state 3. Okay, would this DFA still be legal if we change state 0 to be an accepting state? Well, let's go ahead and sketch what that would look like. So I'll erase these notes that we made here and sketch in an extra circle here to make this an accepting state. And would that be legal? Sure, it would just accept the empty string now uh, and before it rejected the empty string. So it wouldn't be the same DFA, but it would certainly be legal. Uh, so that's no problem. Yes, this would still be legal. All right, let's see if we can get the next question on screen without losing the whole DFA. Would this DFA still be legal if we eliminated the arc from state 5 to itself? So that's, that's this arc up here, from state 5 to itself. So we'd erase that. Um, it'd be a little hard for me to erase that, but I can certainly scribble over it here. Well, it's a question of what makes a DFA legal. Um, it's got to have an input language with at least one letter in it, but it still does have that input language, ones and zeros. It's got to have uh, a set of states, and that state, set of states has to have at least one state in it, because we need a start state. But we've got that. It's got to have a start state. We, we have a start state. Um, so we've got most of the things we need, but we also need a transition function. And the transition function has to be a function. So that is for every state and every input, it's got to have an output. And now we have a state, state 5, where for both inputs, for 0 and for 1, we don't have an output. Um, we only need one of those for it not to be legal. Um, and both of those, well, because it doesn't make it any more not legal, but it's definitely not legal. So the answer is no. This DFA would not be legal if we eliminate that arc. So, like I said, there just has to be one state input combination for which there's no arc for it not to be legal, but there's actually two, uh, so it's not legal for two reasons. Okay. Now, implement this DFA as a circuit, and what I said before is I'm not going to. Uh, but what I am going to do is kind of do the bare bones of how I would implement this as a circuit. So the first thing is you've got to lay out enough D flip-flops to store the states, well, there's six states here, state 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So how many bits do we need to represent six different values? 
And the answer is we need three bits. Two to the third is eight. Um, we don't have eight states, we've got six, but we have too many for just two bits. Two bits would only give us four states. So you're going to need three bits. You're going to have certain patterns that are never going to come up. You'll never get into state six, you'll never get into state seven. So when you draw your multiplexers, your three bit multiplexers, they don't have to have input lines for states six and seven. Okay, so then you're going to draw out 3D flip flops. You're going to wire them to the clock. You're going to wire their outputs, their Q values, to uh, the select lines of the multiplexers. And then you're just going to figure out for each state, you know, for example, state 3, uh, you'll have a wire into each of the three multiplexers for state 3. It'll be the fourth wire down, right, because you'll have your multiplexer here, and the top wire will be 0, and then 1, 2, 3. So this wire right here will be the one that you're concerned about when you happen to be thinking of state 3. And you'll just figure out, in state 3, if I get a 0, I'm going to go to this state, which in binary is 1, 0, 1. And if I get a 1, I'm going to go to this state, 0, 1, 1. So what I can say is the rightmost bit, my rightmost D flip-flop, or maybe my bottom in my diagram, depending on how I draw it, that's always going to be a 1. And my middle bit is going to be the same as the input. And my leftmost bit is going to be the negation of the input. So if this were the, the multiplexer for the middle bit, then I would just feed input into it. And if this were the multiplexer for the leftmost bit, I'd feed the negation of input into it. And if this were the multiplexer for the um, rightmost bit, then I would just feed a constant 1 into it. And so now I've solved one of the bits for all three multiplexers, sorry, one of the states for all three multiplexers. I'm just going to do the same thing for all six states. And once I've wired that thing up and connected it to all the appropriate places, I've got my DFA. I should go ahead and have an accepting state too, so I'm going to need to say that uh, the only time that I accept is when uh, a the leftmost bit, that is, of my state, so maybe I'm going to call this S0, S1, S2, so when S0 is true, and S1 is false, and S2 is true, I'm just going to add those together, and that'll be my output, my accept state, if you like. And where will these come from? Well, they'll come from my 3DFAs. They're the Q outputs of my 3DFAs. So at a really high level, then, that is how we design the DFA. <clears throat> but in detail, that's going to be left as an exercise. So this is scratch work for part D. And part D left as an exercise. Don't write that on your exam either, uh, unless you have a smiley face. And even if you do have a smiley face, don't expect to get marks. Okay.